Hey everyone, Ryan Bolton here with Patriot Home Mortgage. I am a mortgage nerd. Some really big news is shaking up in the real estate world, especially for real estate agents on how they are compensated as a buyer's agent, especially. So there's a lawsuit that was decided in favor of the plaintiff against the National Association of Realtors, along with Keller Williams, Home Services of America, which is part of Remax. I mean, really big brokerages just in the state of Missouri, this uh, all the way back to like 2015. So it's kind of the snapshot window just in that area. But this is kind of ramifications across the whole country, across the entire industry of real estate, because it's really the biggest shakeup to compensation structures that I've ever seen in that side of the industry. And so essentially, the plaintiffs argued that the National Association of Realtors, along with other MLSs, worked together to ensure payment to buyer's agents happened, thereby inflating the amount of the total commissions paid by sellers. So that's essentially what this is trying to say. So if you've sold a home in the last 100 years, however it's been, there was this uh, listing agreement you typically had with a listing agent. That listing agent would then say, okay, part of that I'm going to split with a buyer's agent. So that was always the structure. Now that could be negotiated. Maybe it was a 6%, so it was three and three. You had 3% to the buyer's agent, 3% to the um, seller's agent. So you had this split of that commission. Now I've seen all kinds of different structures where it's two and a half and two and a half, or one and three, or one and, I mean, it's all negotiated as part of that listing agreement with the seller. But either way, the seller is paying for all that. They're paying for that total commission going to the listing agreement, but then that listing agreement's agreeing to pay a buyer's agent. So what they're basically saying is, okay, because there's this known dual agency in a sense, or this dual payment of these two agents, they were able to artificially keep those commissions higher than what they would otherwise be negotiated. That's part of this, this lawsuit is to kind of pull back the curtain on that. And we actually have a, a case now that says, yeah, that's, that's in favor of the plaintiff, in favor of the sellers of homes that they shouldn't be paying for this whole system. And how that filters out, how that changes agents' compensation is yet to be determined. I mean, they're going to appeal. <clears throat> the, the, the case was won $1.78 billion with the judge able to raise it by another three times. They could triple it. So the judge could order it be tripled up to $5.4 billion. That's just in Missouri. We're already starting to see some of these companies are settling or trying to figure out a way to kind of get ahead of this thing. So it'll be very interesting to see how this actually starts to play out and how the appeals process is going to work. But either way, I don't see how there isn't going to be some sort of disclosure change, compensation change, some sort of rule. A very similar thing happened in the mortgage industry that just kind of rings true about what's going on here. So prior to 2008, before the crisis, before the Dodd-Frank bill, there was a rule that was created during 2008 called the Loan Officer Compensation Rule. And what this did is it eliminated any kind of incentive for loan officers to sell anything or get paid by any other way than what the loan amount is. So before that, you could make more money if you sold a higher rate. You could make more money, say they wanted to push an interest-only arm more than the 30-year fixed, or a three-year arm instead of a seven-year arm, or subprime and stated income. You know, There's all these incentives to kind of sell different products that were hotter on the market. Maybe Wall Street wanted a different type of loan. They wanted higher interest rates. They wanted different types of loan programs. So it was something where there was this incentive to kind of sell whatever you could to a client, make whatever money you can make on the client instead of whatever's the best loan for the client. Now, I don't feel I ever did that. It was something where I always, whatever the client was the best loan for them, that's the loan we went with. It wasn't ever trying to, hey, how much can I make on every loan that comes in the door? But that wasn't, not everybody did that. There definitely was incentives to sell different loan programs. But it is something where after 08, the loan officer compensation rule said, nope, there's no incentive to sell a 15-year, a 30-year, an ARM, an interest-only, subprime, FHA, USDA, doesn't matter the loan type program, credit score, doesn't matter any, any of those factors. It's just simply how much is the loan amount, you get a percentage of that. That's it. So they simplified that entire process. And it was pretty scary with everything that was changing and how that was going to affect everybody. But I think it stabilized the industry. It legitimized the programs. It got rid of kind of the fishy stuff. It got it just got rid of that, that incentive to sell loans instead of clients what they needed. That was really kind of the rule change in 2008. And also changed some of the forms, the loan estimate, the closing disclosure. All this stuff was in result of 2008. 
I feel like this is the first domino that's going to fall on the real estate side of things of how this compensation works. Because when you think about it, the seller is now covering the listing agent, which is listing the home, and they're covering covering the agent that's representing the opposite of what the seller usually wants. The seller wants the most for the home. The buyer wants to pay the least. This is part of that negotiation of where you find common ground or where you kind of figure out what works for both people. That's why I think it's so important to have a buyer's agent because they want to get you the lowest price, work out the best deadlines, work in the closing costs, work in the home warranty or contingencies or whatever gets negotiated through this process. So I still think it's very important because you have two different ideals here. You got one that wants the most for the home, one that wants to pay the least. But it's not just about price. There's other things that get negotiated on the price. So having somebody in your corner makes sense. But all of this is paid for by the seller. Everything's paid for the buyer itself. In fact, one of the big things you see in advertisements out there, why to use a buyer's agent is what? You don't pay for it as a buyer, right? The seller pays for it. So the seller is paying for somebody to negotiate against them. It's always been kind of just how it works because a lot of times it's the agent, listing agent, that's actually splitting their commission with that buyer's agent. So that's why it's kind of just the way it is. It's really, okay, the seller's agreeing to a commission and then the agent says, okay, out of that commission, I'm now going to pay the buyer's agent. So I'm really just reducing my commission to pay the buyer's agent. That's kind of how this works. And then if there isn't a buyer's agent, what usually happens? Usually in the listing agreement, it says that the listing agreement will take less or the listing agent will take less. So maybe the commission's at 6% if there's two agents. If not, maybe it gets dropped to 4% or 5% or you see that happen a lot where there is a reduction if there isn't a buyer's agent. So you can already see how that kind of laid the groundwork for this to say, wait a minute, those commissions are artificially higher because you're now adding this other agent, which is artificially keeping those commissions higher, which is the brunt of what the seller is paying for. So big shakeup. I don't know any other way to say it. With the fact that this is kind of at least that first domino to start kind of pulling back the curtain a little bit and saying, okay, wait a minute, it's going to open up the door to other states that are going to look at this. It's going to open up the door to other legislation maybe or rule changes. Or in Utah, we have the Department of Real Estate. Maybe they're going to start looking at this and saying, okay, we got to change the verbiage at least. At least there's going to be verbiage changes. You know, at least there's going to be stuff that'll change how that form is written now, especially when you're talking a $1.78 billion in damages was awarded to the plaintiff. Now, it's still going to go through appeal. I don't, anybody's writing a check on that yet, but the judge could bump it up to $5.4 billion. And you're already seeing some of the brokerages, MLS is out there ahead of this that are starting to settle some of this stuff, knowing that there's already this precedent. It, it's just going to shake things up. There's no doubt about it. How that's going to play out, who knows? We got an election year coming up. Maybe there really won't be anything on that side of things until we get a little further into the following year. But it is a lot of stuff that's just going to shake up the industry. It's just going to change how it's verbalized or how this is paid. I mean, is really the goal of this to remove buyer's agents or at least remove the seller paying for it? Is that kind of, I think that's probably what this is trying to say is basically say, okay, the seller pays for the seller's agent, the buyer pays for the buyer's agent, which now means it now goes on to the buyers to take the brunt of that cost instead of building into the sales price or taking it out of equity or or whatever, does that mean that it's got to be built in like closing costs, like we do now where we raise sales price or just build it in as part of the negotiation? Or is it something where they have to prepay up front to a buyer's agent? Is I, I don't know. That's why it's such an industry shakeup and why we don't know exactly how a system that's been in place for so long that now has a lawsuit that is now setting some precedent or starting to set some changes, how that's going to play out. So take, I want to show you a couple of videos and just make a couple of comments on a couple of videos, but I love your thoughts, your opinion, love your comments on this to just see how you think this is going to affect the industry. So let's take a look at a couple of videos real quick. So what does the ruling mean for the industry at large and maybe what you pay for a home? Where do we go from here? Joining us now on set is Bess Friedman. She is the CEO of Brown Harris Stevens and a member of the National Association of Realtors and Michael Ketchmark the lead attorney of that lawsuit representing 500,000 homeowners in Missouri. Bess and Michael, thank you for joining us here. Uh, first to you, uh, Michael, what, what what is big settlement here, 1.8, or verdict, I should say, $1.8 billion. First up, where does that money go? Is, is money going to be kicked back to people who bought homes, or where? Sure, I mean, we view it as a day of accountability, and I told the jury, this case is simple. It comes down to premises I learned when I was in kindergarten. If you take something that doesn't belong to you, you give it back. 
the money will be returned to the homeowners that were the victims of this rigged system. It's been going on in our country for about 100 years, and it stops today. And, and we're going to hold these um, th these corporate real estate companies and National Association of Realtors accountable for their conduct. And I understand you are ready or have already filed more lawsuits. Yeah, the day that the, the minute that that verdict was was came in, we we filed the lawsuit against the National Association of Realtors and these other large corporate real estate companies to bring the same relief nationwide. And we expect the damages and damages in those cases to be in excess of $100 billion. So I first want to disagree with this idea that commissions or the system that is is stealing from homeowners, stealing from the wealth of homeowners, is this rigged system. I, I think that's a mischaracterization of what's going on. The listing agreement upfront is a negotiated commission on selling the home. That's negotiated. It's upfront. It's not like you show up at the closing table and the agent just comes up with some random number. Okay, you owe me ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, thirty. It's negotiated as part of the sales agreement. It's up front. It's a known amount. What, what conjures up in my mind somebody stealing is something they didn't know about. They weren't aware of it. It was fraudulent. It was something where they skimmed off the top. They did referral fees. There's, there's, there's all this other terminology I would use there. I don't use that in the case of commissions that are negotiated up front before the buyer's agent's even involved. You know, it, it, And even then there can be some negotiation. I've seen times afterwards that say, okay, to make this deal work, because of the appraisal, because of the, the having to lower the price, because they owe more than what the home is worth. I've seen them even go after the fact and negotiate it down. So this, I, this, this comment here about stealing, I just think is a mischaracterization of the hard men and women working in the real estate industry that are representing buyers and sellers. Now, can an argument be made that why is the seller paying for both sides? Sure. Okay, sure. Let's have that conversation. It's been this way for 100 years. Doesn't mean that it needs to stay that way. Is there some sort of adjustment that should be made with how it's disclosed or the fact that the buyer should pay the buyer's agent, the seller should pay the seller's agent, just kind of keep that completely separate? Okay, sure. Is the system because of that dual agent or that, that sense that both agents are getting compensated, that that artificially keeps this commissions higher? Sure. Is the commission at 6% the same value on a million dollar home as a $200,000 home? Okay. These are conversations worth having. Sure. But I don't like this characterization that they're stealing. I think that really misrepresents what real estate agents do on a daily basis. Second of all, though, what he commented here, that this opens up the precedent to be able to go nationwide, county by county, state by state, and start opening up the floodgates of being able to look into this and find out that damages are owed across the country is a big deal. That's why this is such an industry shakeup, why it actually has some teeth and has some legs because of at least this ruling. Now there's going to be appeals, there's going to be other things, but I can't imagine this isn't going to have some ripples, some effects throughout the industry and some overdue, maybe some not necessary. That's what all this stuff has worked out. That's what, how this stuff gets worked out. But I, I wanted to comment on those two things. So uh, let's check out of this other video real quick. According to a survey from listwithclever.com, the average real estate commission in Washington is 5.3%. It's slightly less than the national average of 5.37%. Doing the math, if you want to sell a house in Washington worth about $578,000, which the medium home value is in Washington, be ready to pay more than $30,000 just in realtor fees. The buyer's fee has been a part of the real estate process for so long, it may feel mandatory to consumers. So what I saw in this video that I wanted to comment on is this idea that the 30,000 that's in this scenario on a $550,000 house in Washington state is $30,000 to the commission to the buyer's agent. It kind of comes off that way to me. Maybe it doesn't to you. Uh, you can watch the entire video. I'll put the full video on my uh, descriptions down below, but it seems to me like it just kind of points out that, oh man, the agent's making $30,000. Keep in mind, that's both. That's splitting that amount. I'm not trying to justify that even $15,000 is a worthy commission on something that's selling for $550,000. But it, So that's a conversation worth having. Is it something where that's part of this issue is the fact that the home prices have gone up so much, the commission's still a percentage. And so the, the work that's being done to sell the house hasn't changed enough to, to, to justify such a huge dollar amount increase when it's still the same 6%. I mean, when homes were $100,000, 6% was six grand. Now that homes are half a million dollars, the commission's $30,000. So 
that's probably what's stemming from a lot of this is when you see the cost of home prices are going up so much that this this system is kind of rigged to also increase prices or it's it's rigged in a sense that you can't talk about lowering that down, but it's all negotiable. There's no reason in the world why you can't negotiate a price. Now, I will tell you this, it's pretty hard to negotiate that price down because it's such an industry standard. And that might be part of why they're saying it's kind of rigged because you got kind of two sides of the transaction, buyers and sellers that are artificially keeping those commissions higher by being able to just say, okay, it's our system, it's our MLS. If you want it exposed to all of us in our club that is has access and kind of the gatekeepers of all this, this is how our commission structure works. So if you want to play the game, you can. Now, you can sell a, for a, a sell by owner. There's nothing that says you have to they have to spend the commissions on this. But I would say generally that having these agents and the representation that they're doing is worth the commission. That's what I'm going to stand by. That's what I've seen in the industry is worth a commission, I should say. Now, is it worth that amount? That's where it can start getting into the gray area because it is something where every agent that's in the club, you know, every agent that's on the MLS, whether they've been doing it for six months or a hundred years, you know, whether they have more experience or less experience, it's still kind of tied in the same commission structure. So it's like the people that have been doing it the longest that have kind of earned those commissions or, or the industry experts are kind of pulling up the people that haven't been doing it very long and can earn similar commissions. But what you'll see in that case is sometimes they're on teams or they're getting only a percentage of the amount. I mean, that 30 grand that they mentioned in this video is split up to two brokerages, then might be split up to transaction coordinators, then receptionists, then all the other things it takes to run that that business. So it's always going to be a dispute as what somebody worth, what's commissions worth, what's somebody willing to pay. But all this stuff is negotiated up front. It's all part of that listing agreement. It's not like somebody was broadsided with some bill they didn't know about. It's all built in up front to that listing agreement. Then that listing agreement split with the buyers. Now, does that system need to be revamped? Okay, maybe. Maybe it's worth talking about. And that's what this whole thing is going to spear up. But I don't like some of the narrative I'm hearing out, about there that's vilifying the real estate agents that is making them uh, you know, seem like they're stealing from people or that they're out to get people or that they're not representing their clients well. I just think that's a misrepresentation. I just, that's really what I want the video to kind of state with a couple of these videos. So love to hear your comments. Uh, click subscribe, like the channel. I'm going to do more of these kind of news videos, more of these comment videos as I kind of learn the software and try to learn how to edit these, these types of videos. But uh, really enjoy what I do for a living. Really love helping people with mortgage loans. And like I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of this feels like that 08 loan officer compensation rules that kind of kicked in in our industry. And now we're starting to see kind of the same thing maybe start to filter out with some sort of compensation structure rule change to the the real estate industry the, the real estate agent industry the realtor industry so i uh, love your comments love to click uh, click, click and subscribe and let me know uh, what we did right and what we did wrong on the video but i love the opportunity to, to dialogue with you and just kind of see what your thoughts are and if any new information comes out i'll make sure i get that posted as well have a wonderful day mm -hmm.